Have you ever dreamed of owning the entire crypto space, or at least having you know, part ownership of all the coins that are currently rising and rising up in value, DeFi, shitcoin, meme coin, AI coin, whatever it is? Well, it turns out that there's actually a way that you can really expose yourself to everything within the crypto space uh, using only one token. So today we're going to go ahead and talk about the team behind the token, the token itself, and maybe some uh, things that the team should also be working on uh, moving forward. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the project behind this endeavor is actually Cryptix. Uh, Cryptix.finance is essentially a DeFi app on Ethereum that allows you to yield farm uh, with two of their main tokens. Number one going to be the governance token, which is CTX. Uh, this is going to be like most other governance tokens. You know, holders of CTX can vote on protocol upgrades uh, for their main token, which we're going to talk about, as well as future products within their you know crypto Cryptex uh, ecosystem. And then we have total market cap token, which is going to be obviously the one we're all here for. Uh, essentially, again, it's a token that exposes you to the entire crypto market cap. Uh, as of right now, the entire space is currently at around, I think, like 1.8 trillion last I checked. Uh, it's been going up and down a lot. So, you know, whatever the price up on the screen is, that's what the actual market cap is. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, this, again, doesn't include just DeFi coins, shit coins, meme coins. This includes uh, everything that any of these, uh, you know, and any of the biggest providers of these um, data sources are providing. Uh, and you'll kind of see where I'm getting for that from uh, in, in a bit. And again, this doesn't just include DeFi coins, shitcoin, meme coins. This includes everything in the space that's being tracked. So uh, this pretty much is a representation of the entire crypto space, which is pretty cool. But how does it actually work, right? I mean, who, who cares about all this stuff? Like, how does it work, Hunter? Well, you know, give it to me straight. Come on, bro. Anyways, how does it work? So... The protocol uses uh, price oracles. I'm sure you guys are familiar with price oracles. Uh, Chainlink is the biggest one. Uh, but essentially what it does is Chainlink is able to take the prices of the entire crypto market cap from different points across the web, average them out, and then of course give the protocol uh, the price that TCAP is supposed to be. Uh, in this case, you know, TCAP isn't technically the price of the actual market cap. It's, I think it's like a thousandth of the price or like a hundredth of the price or something like that. Not too good with math right now, but you know, if one coin costs about $1.8 trillion, yeah, I don't think anyone would be buying it, right? <laughs> but something that, that should be mentioned, uh, I should be clear, is that there's a difference between uh, the Oracle price and the market price. Um, that's something that we're going to get into in, in a little bit. But just to be clear, Oracle price is the price that is being given uh, pretty much to the protocol by these different data providers. And the market price is the price that people judge how much the token should be. So there will always technically be a little bit of a difference, even though in theory, it's supposed to be exactly the same, obviously. I also wanted to shout out Chainlink, by the way, uh, for this dope website. I didn't even know that they had this, uh, but it pretty much tells you all the data sources that Chainlink gets these prices from. Uh, it kind of gives you a rundown of how accurate it may be in terms of the uh, price that Chainlink is giving to the protocol versus what they're getting from the actual data source. Uh, so really cool website. I mean, no wonder Chainlink is going up in price. And the great thing about Total Market Cap as well is that it's actually backed or really collateralized by 200% of the price of the entire market cap, uh, which I'll be honest with you, I have no idea where they got the money for that. Uh, but you know what? Actually, it could be that maybe it's backed by 200% of the entire supply multiplied by the price of the coin. I don't know. Uh, if you know what it is, then let me know down below. <laughs> but the point is that it's uh, backed and collateralized. So, you know, if there is some sort of price discrepancy, uh, which we're actually going to be looking at soon, um, I'm not sure if they actually use that to e even it out, but I think that's more of like a, you know, for emergency situations. But nonetheless, uh, they've also been audited by Quantstamp as well. Uh, so hope is that there's no accidental bugs or rug pulls, uh, which in this case obviously is great. Um, Quantstamp is obviously, I think, one of the bigger... Um, auditors in the in the space. So I'm glad to see that they've been working with Quantstamp and making sure that everything is on the up and up. But now let's go ahead and get into things that I think may need a little bit of work, uh, in my opinion. Number one, uh, and that's going to be the price discrepancy. Uh, earlier, I mentioned the Oracle price of TCAP. Uh, and, you know, obviously, I mentioned that there's technically two different prices we have to concern ourselves with. Number one, it's going to be the Oracle price. Again, the one, the price that is supposed to always be correct, uh, based off the data that Chainlink is you know, being, being given from the different data sources, as well as the market price, which is supposed to equal the Oracle price, assuming that everything goes well. And the thing is, uh, you know, I was looking at the price just now. Granted, the market just dumped. Obviously, we, you know, we're all familiar with that. Uh, you know, it dumped and went back up and all that stuff. But the thing is, if you take a look at the price right now, it's way off. As of the making of this video, the TCAP price from the Oracle is about $182, 
and the actual TCAP market price is about $280. Uh, I guess that was the price of it before it really dumped. But, you know, this is kind of what I mean when I say, you know, uh, this is like something really important, right? Because, you know, if someone wants to buy a total market cap coin, they want to make sure it's actually rep representative of the entire market cap. Accuracy is key, especially for tokens like this, because at the end of the day, if it's not accurate, the price isn't accurate, then what are you really buying, right? But anyways, I went ahead and inquired about the situation uh, to the team over on Discord. Um, they didn't know I was making this video, by the way. I, I just wanted to ask a question. And I asked, uh, hey guys, what are the incentives currently to bring the market price of TCAP closer to the Oracle? The arbitrage opportunity doesn't seem to be attracting many. And by the way, when I, when I mentioned the arbitraging opportunity, uh, it's because, you know, technically, you know, this, since there is such a price discrepancy, you should be able to make a quite a bit of money uh, being able to arbitrage between the actual TCAP price, uh, the market price, and you know, the Oracle price. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I, would, I don't know exactly how I would go ahead and do that, uh, but that's kind of the whole point with the, the price difference, that hopefully there's enough demand for people to go ahead and uh, make profits off getting the price back to equaling each other. But Chris Garner, I guess a member of the team or a member of the Discord, uh, mentioned that two proposals are on the way to reduce the gap. The first one is already approved, which reduces the ratio from the ETH vaults that I assume that they have um, on Cryptics.Finance, uh, and second one uh, to create more vaults uh, with different collateral types. Uh, and then they also mentioned that two more are still on research. And then I go ahead and say thank you. Uh, so it's quite obvious that they see that it's kind of an issue and they're working on it right now, which I think is really, really dope. Um, and that's kind of why I, I, uh, I'm kind of making a video on it today. Uh, they, it's funny. They actually reached out to me like months ago <laughs> and I forgot to respond. <laughs> um, I did respond, but they never said that. said anything back. But nonetheless, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a project that's in the works. Uh, and it's funny because it seems like something that's very uh, simple, I guess, in theory. Are right? you just making a coin that represents the entire market cap? but is quite hard, I guess, to do because, you know, you're trying to peg a coin to the price of something that's constantly moving, um, you know, which I think is really cool. So I like that they're actually still researching this stuff. I love to see stuff still in development, especially with an active team. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm glad, I'm glad they're aware of the issue. Uh, and the good thing is that they're looking to provide more incentives uh, for the gap between the Oracle price and the market price to close. Uh, because to me, I think that's probably the most important thing right now that they uh, obviously end up do. Because if they're if the the coin itself doesn't equal the right price, then why are you going to bother building anything else, right? So shout out to the team on that one. Uh, something else I also wanted to mention uh, was the decentralization of the project itself. If you look at the website, they go ahead and have a FAQ section. They go ahead and say TCAP uses developer keys to pause deposits and minting in case of a bug to protect users. This can only be activated once per vault. To change protocol parameters, a governance token CTX is used in combination with a time lock contract. So in this case, you know, they don't really say yes or no if TCAP is decentralized, but more or less it isn't, I guess, as decentralized as I think most people would like. Uh, and that's, again, to really just prevent any bugs from happening within the, the depositing and minting, I guess, you know, contracts, uh, which, I mean, it's definitely understandable. <laughs> you don't want there to be a bug in a minting contract because Lord forbid someone goes ahead and mints an infinite amount of TCAP. Uh, but at the same time, it's something that I hope that they're actually using, that they're uh, maybe working towards uh, getting rid of. Obviously, they've been audited, as they mentioned. Uh, maybe it was that part of the contract that wasn't audited. Maybe it was, and they want to be safe. I don't know. But um, I'm, always I'm always interested in how projects uh, approach uh, you know, the decentralization and safety, because those are two very important uh, factors within the, within the crypto space, right? Would you rather be, a, would you rather, would you rather a project be more centralized, but almost rug proof? And it's not rug proof, but a lot less uh, ruggable, <laughs> or would you rather have it be potentially more prone to bugs and, you know, more decentralized, you know, uh, it, it's obviously there is no, there is no right answer in, in this case. Um, obviously, you know, there is no such thing as fully decentralization in my opinion. Uh, but I do like to see projects working towards decentralization. So hopefully, uh, they do have some sort of plan, um, you know, to kind of get rid of those developer keys uh, in the future. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to mention in terms of, you know, things I wanted to comment on, uh, was the marketing or really lack thereof. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a huge community behind Cryptex. Uh, and that's partially why I wanted to make the video. Cause I, again, I think this is a really cool idea. Um, and just, you know, a way not only for people like us that are in crypto to get involved uh, and just invest in the entire space in general, uh, but also, you know, other people, right? I mean, Cryptex, I could literally see being on 
the likes of Coinbase, Gemini, uh, KuCoin, stuff like that, uh, because of how much of like a general coin it is. It's literally a coin that, rep that replicates the entire market cap. So you could have people trading this stuff pretty much on the, like, on the four-year cycle that Bitcoin operates on, uh, which is pretty funny that I find. Um, but I don't know. I think it's a really, really cool idea. Um, and especially, again, if you're betting on the space in its entirety, this is kind of a no-brainer, to be honest with you. Um, again, once they get that price discrepancy fixed, because obviously until then it really doesn't make any sense. Uh, but to kind of conclude, um, I, again, I love the idea. Uh, it seems like a relatively simple concept, but obviously uh, in practice it's a lot harder than it really seems. Um, you know, and I just... And I want to applaud the team for doing what they do. I think uh, there's a couple of uh, pretty notable people who are actually uh, working on this project. I think Preston Van Loom, or hopefully I said your name correctly, uh, was one of the people who's on this project that I think he also worked on Ethereum at some point. Uh, you also have, uh, I think there's like a dog in there uh, that I remember from the team. <laughs> you got a couple of people in there as well. Um, I I'll be honest with you, I don't, remember that. I don't remember too many of them. All I remember was the Preston Van Loom because of his name. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, I love the idea. Uh, if I said anything that doesn't really make any sense, please let me know down below. And before I dip, I'd just like to say, uh, you guys know I've been kind of engulfing myself in the DeFi space quite a little bit. So, you know, I am probably going to be making a little more videos about DeFi, yield farming, stuff like that. Um, I'm not the best at it, obviously. I'm really, I'm actually a noob at it, I will, I will say. Uh, but I do like talking about it and projects that are kind of within it, doing something interesting instead of just copying code. And obviously these guys are doing something really cool here. So shout out to the team. Shout out to anyone who's, who's in DeFi right now. Shout out to anyone who's, you know, yield farming. Um, <laughs> whatever. Again, do you think TCAP is a good idea? Do you like it? Do you think it's dope? I don't know. Let me know down below, bro. I'll see you on the next one, okay? Peace.